Hi there, this is Pride Weekly. We'll start with Monday. Just when you think Russia can't get any more anti-queer, Vladimir Putin says, hold my vodka. The country wants to label the international LGBT public movement, whatever that means, as extremist and ban its activities there. A lawsuit's been filed with the Supreme Court and a hearing's due next week. There's been about a decade of chipping away at queer rights in Russia. Earlier this year, gender reassignment was outlawed, as was same-sex marriage back in 2020. Pyotr Vaznysiensky is a Russian LGBTQ plus activist who now lives in Germany. He tells the BBC the Kremlin needs an easy target to deflect attention from the Ukraine conflict. The war is lost, the economy is destroyed, and the authorities need to show people what they have risked their lives for. And the best idea they have is to find a new scapegoat, LGBT people. Previously, the extremist labels been used by Russia to prosecute political opponents and human rights organisations can see people jailed for up to 10 years. It's Transgender Day of Remembrance, a chance to honour the lives lost in acts of anti-trans violence. The day's been marked since 1999, after the murder the previous year of Rita Hester, a 34-year-old black transgender woman who was stabbed in Boston in America. Over the last 12 months, 320 trans and gender diverse people have been murdered around the world, most of them transgender women of colour. And a group of transgender women has been having lunch with the Pope at the Vatican. There were among about 1,200 poor and homeless people invited on the Catholic Church's World Day of the Poor, One of the women, Claudia Victoria Salas, was seated opposite Pope Francis. She said just beforehand she was sending a big kiss to him. Just the latest effort at making the church more inclusive, it recently allowed trans people to be godparents. It's Pride Daily for Tuesday. A proposed ban on conversion therapy in the UK has been submitted in the House of Lords. Comes after this was left off the Conservative government's agenda for the next 12 months, having first been promised over five years ago. Conversion therapy attempts to change or suppress someone's sexuality or gender identity. It's known to be as effective as Will Smith's anger management classes. Baroness Burt from the Liberal Democrats has put the plan forward. There'd be unlimited fines for those who break the ban. Kitty was put through six months of sessions at a church in Surrey, She tells the BBC how toxic it was. A senior member of the church came to me and said same-sex attraction isn't something from God, it's Satan whispering in your ear, he's trying to distract you away from your relationship with Jesus. I've had suicidal thoughts on and off, two suicide attempts. I'd just almost describe it as being in shell shock, like someone had stripped everything I knew away about myself and replaced it with lies. So what happens next with the proposal? Well, it now goes through a number of rounds of voting in the House of Lords, If there's enough backing, MPs in the House of Commons will debate it and vote on it. A well-known LGBTQ plus rights activist in Chile has died after a battle with blood cancer. Luis Larain was 42 years old. He co-founded Fundación Iguales, or the Equals Foundation, in 2011, which pushes for equal rights for queer people and an end to discrimination. A goodbye video from Luis was posted online. He said, keep going with your struggles. And a new Pride event in Australia is being targeted by bigoted knuckle draggers. Bay Pride is part of the Wynnum Fringe Festival in Queensland. Fake flyers and letters are being distributed, with one claiming the family event's dangerous to children. Another features a biblical scene, yep, and publicises a planned protest, which it says isn't due to homophobia or transphobia. And that's how you know it totally is. Anyway, it goes ahead regardless on Sunday. It's Pride Daily for Wednesday. Transgender women are being banned from international women's cricket. Players won't be eligible if they've been through male puberty, regardless of any surgery or treatment they've had. The International Cricket Council says it's to protect the integrity of the game and the safety of players. Joanne Harper is a transgender sports scientist who's advised the International Olympic Committee. 
She tells the BBC the threat to women's sport has been exaggerated. The question isn't do trans women have advantages, but can trans women and cisgender women compete against one another in meaningful competition? Truthfully, the answer isn't definitive yet. The science is in its infancy, and certainly in all sports, we don't know. A review of the new gender eligibility regulations will take place in two years. They were drawn up after a nine-month consultation. The upper house of the French Parliament's debating whether victims of historic homophobic laws should get a formal apology. This would also see people convicted before 1982 receive financial compensation. One of the laws labelled being gay as a social scourge, like drug use and prostitution. I quite fancy being a social scourge. It sounds rather exciting. If the bill's passed by the Senate, the upper house, it then moves to the French National Assembly for approval. And a star's been dedicated to George Michael on the Path of Angels in Los Angeles. It's to acknowledge his volunteer work for Project Angel Food and the substantial donations he made. The organisation provides more than one and a half million meals each year for critically ill people. It was originally set up in 1989 to help those with HIV and AIDS. It's Pride Daily for Thursday. Jake Daniels says it felt like a slap in the face when England midfielder Jordan Henderson moved to a club in Saudi Arabia. The 18-year-old Blackpool striker is the UK's only openly gay, active male professional footballer. Before Henderson flushed his principles down the nearest toilet, he'd actually been a vocal queer ally. But then the cash came a-calling, and the 33-year-old moved to Al Etifak in Saudi, a country where gay sex is illegal, over the summer. Jake's been speaking to Newsbeat, and he's not hiding his disappointment. Henderson messaged me when I came out. Um, I have the DM on my phone, you know, he was backing me the whole way. He was like, we're proud of what you've done. And then seeing him move to Saudi, it's kind of like slaps in my face, really, hasn't he? So obviously it was frustrating, but I guess the money pays well and money must mean more to people. He also says Steven Gerrard reached out to him too, but now he's in Saudi as Al Etifak's manager. A Catholic school in Indiana in the US will now consider applications from transgender people. St Mary's College says a new non-discrimination policy will come in next year. Obviously, they who hate inclusivity are oh so triggered. Online comments include what a gross betrayal and this decision is blasphemous. The school says it's all in line with their mission to empower women through education at all stages in life. And the Roman emperor is being reclassified by a museum in the UK as a transgender woman. Elega Ballas will be referred to with the female pronouns of she and her in future. If you go by claims in some classical texts, the emperor once said, Call me not lord, for I am a lady. There's been disagreement for many years amongst academics over her gender identity. She ruled until her assassination in 222 AD at the age of just 18. It's Pride Daily for Friday. We'll start with something from the cutting off your nose to spite your face files. A school board in Southern America has knocked back a $10,000 grant from an LGBTQ plus organisation. They voted against EC Glass High in Virginia accepting the money from the It Gets Better project, which supports queer young people. The money would have been spent on a designated safe space for all students. And the one parent spoke up against at a meeting of the school board and just listen to him. Alexa, play ignorant bigotry, please. Let me be very clear. The LBGTQ agenda in schools is about indoctrination and grooming our children. Parent George Barry, courtesy of WSET ABC 13, is a couple of the students who spoke up and were ignored. Having a room where I could actually calm down and not worry about the other students judging me, it would be amazing. I want everyone to feel safe and to know that there is somewhere that they can go and just breathe for a second. Romania's Prime Minister reckons the country isn't ready to uphold the rights of same-sex couples. Comes off the back of a ruling by the European Court of Human Rights back in May, which said Romania was refusing to legally recognise the relationships. PM Marcel Ciaulacu also says it's just not one of his priorities. 
I will place a substantial bet in your preferred currency. That man ain't one of us. An away nightclub in the US has shut down after 40 years. The owners of Berlin in Chicago are blaming increased expenses off the back of the unionization of its staff. They'd been pushing for better paying conditions and went on strike over the summer. The club had been described as a dancing planet of glitter and glee. Sounds just like my life. Well, sort of. I'm Kev McGrath. Pride Daily Specials all next week. See you Monday.